Lab testing one two. Sound Sleuth Lab. Today we're gonna build some world class hydrophones. The things we need are waterproof resin, some molds, a pair of piezo cylinders, a couple of XLR connectors, two circuit boards, and some microphone cable. This video is the video portion of an instructable that includes all the background, parts list, and more details in order to keep the video short. The magic is in the piezo cylinders. These are very similar to what the Navy uses in their sonar systems. They are ceramic with silver plating on the inside and the outside allowing us to solder to them. The circuit we're using is adapted from my OPA Alice microphone with a few minor changes. It connects to the piezo element on one end and the mic cable on the other end. Our first challenge is soldering to the cylinder. I'm using standard 6337 solder. Be careful with heat. Too much can damage the piezo element. There's something called the Curie temperature. Above that and it loses its piezo properties. Tin the cylinder, then solder two short wires with the outer one being signal and the inner one ground. I recommend water-based flux, then after both are soldered, clean the cylinder carefully with soap and water, and then a final rinse with isopropyl alcohol. Man, of course this would slide a bit after I hit record on the camera. Here are both of them prior to cleaning. I designed a single-use mold for this and then 3D printed a pair of them. All the files are in the instructable. We need to make the element and the printed circuit board all fit inside so that it's totally encased within the resin. Here are the completed assemblies ready for the mic cable to get attached. The mic cable we're using is pretty standard. I picked one that I know is rugged and not too hard to work with. We need to prep the circuit board end with really short leads and make them match up to the printed circuit board connections. The goal is centering the cable without stretching or stress. I tin the connection points on the board so I could solder the leads straight off to the side. This makes things much easier. Here's the XLR side. Pin one ground, blue to two, and clear to three. Here's the fully soldered printed circuit board. Note the wires come straight out and everything is pretty much in line. Okay, before going any further, connect this to a preamp and test it. One is left, and this one is right. Do not embed these without testing. Now on to the pay close attention so you don't mess up portion of the video. We need to make sure that the printed circuit board and the cylinder are centered before casting. I made a jig to have a cross piece that I could hang the wires from and then dangle them down. I'm using a Teflon baking pan so that nothing sticks. And then I'm using some cable clips and tape to hold the wires in place at the right height. The goal here is that nothing touches the mold side so it is fully encased. I didn't have a good mold at first and actually prototyped these with two 50 milliliter disposable measuring cups, one on top of the other. Cut the bottom off of one and hot glue them together if that is the route you want to go. Sonically, there's really no difference in how they perform. Okay, now let's put the assembly inside the molds. I pour both simultaneously and I use masking tape to hold things in place as I got everything positioned. Alright, now the real fun part, mixing the resin. Measure equal parts A and B and then pour them into one container that is both easy to pour from and you can throw away when you're done. What I found interesting is that as you stir, the liquid gets both a bit clearer and the viscosity goes down. You can actually feel it getting thinner as you stir. That's when it's mixed and ready to pour. Carefully pour this into the mold. It will set up in about five minutes, turn white, and then in about 30 minutes or less, you can remove the mold. I've done this five or six times and I've never used a mold release agent. The measuring cups and the 3D printed mold can be split carefully with a razor blade and then pulled or broken away. All right, we are finished. Now let's go test them. Our first test with these hydrophones is gonna be with some sidewalk chalk. 
We get a really cool chemical reaction when sidewalk chalk is put into water that releases some gas bubbles. Let's listen to it now. Our second test is with red hot metal into water. 